of you I know, but uh, some of you I haven't, some of you I haven't met before. Um, I'm Kevin Cronin, and I'm owner and founder of ARC Physical Therapy. We're right down the street, right at the right street corner from Starbucks. Um, and uh, we've been at that location for about a year and a half now. Um, we used to be at North Avenue and West Avenue for almost 18 years. And I just moved here, I love it here, this is great. This is a great location where you're at, Nick. This is, you know, this is a great place to be on the street here. Um, so I, Nick asked me to come and talk to you about knee injuries um, and some prevention things too. So I wanted to go over some of the some of the basics like causes of knee problem, um, injuries, mechanical problems, and arthritis. Those are the those are the major um, categories for different kinds of knee problems, knee injuries. Um, so you can have ligamentous injuries, like ACL and ligamentous. You know, um, man, can you get me out of that box, the, the, the pointer? It's that laser pointer? Yeah. That might be easier. I have to keep going up to here. Um, things like a torn meniscus. Yeah, everybody's heard of ACL, I'm sure. Torn meniscus, and then we'll, we'll, we'll show you what those actually are. There's, there's some good pictures in here. In that stuff. Um, knee bursitis, um, not as common. Don't see that much, but um, which is an overuse injury. And patellar tendonitis, which is also an overuse injury. But it can be, it can be a one-time strain injury too. If someone's trying to lift too much weight or push really hard against something, and then it can, it can cause inflammation there as well. So ACL, that's your ACL right there, intercruciate ligament. That's what it looks like if it were torn. So you can see in the knee, there's a knee like this. So that ACL is inside behind the, behind the kneecap, kind of. Um, that's a real common injury. Um, it's very, it's much more common in females. Five times as common in female athletes, and um, there, there's not a lot written about why that is. But one of the things that we know for sure is that, and I've seen it in the clinic all the time with. Um, with female athletes, if they come in, even if it's not for an ACL injury, I'll test and put something on them called a surface EMG, where you actually test, it picks up electrical activity in the muscle. So if someone contracts, you see a little bar shoot across in the number. And then put it on the hamstrings and on the quads, and when most males stand like this, the quads and the hamstrings fire, and they fire pretty close to equal. When females do it, most females stand and only the quads fire. So that means when they're jumping and landing like this, only the quads are firing. And when the quads fire, it pulls, because the quads attach here, it pulls that lower part of the leg out, and that's what causes, most of the time, that's what causes a lot of their injuries, is to land hard, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an extension injury. And um, so that, you see it five times as, as frequently with females. Um, torn meniscus, these are the meniscus in here, inside the knees. Inside the knees, you can see these, these little things in here. These poor guys, knees and knees in that shape. But the meniscus are like, they're like little rubber discs, kind of, that go between the two bones to help cushion. So that cushions this area right in here, um, and helps, helps to, also helps with movement, helps make it more stable. So you can see here, what happens when, you're, when you like straighten your leg out, the knee turns a little bit, so your femur turns a little bit on the tibia, so it kind of goes like, so as you're standing, it kind of, as you go straighter, it kind of turns a little bit this way. I'm exaggerating that, but that's what happens. And these meniscus can move a little bit, the one on the inside moves a little bit more. Um, and if you twist too much, you can get it, you can have an injury. This is, this is an injury called a bucket handle tear, it's real common. Um, that's a bucket handle tear, this is just a, a other kind of tear. You can get them out of the edge of out here too, as well. And when um, when they do a meniscal repair, um, they like with this bucket handle tear, they might do a repair on something like that. And that's pretty important because it's so huge. They may want to do a repair because if they just take this out, that's what they used to do. They just take it out, just cut it out, and leave that little piece here left. Well, then you're going to be more unstable, and you're also more prone to arthritis. So nowadays they're, they they go and they'll go in and repair them. And that's a long, that's a long rehab. It's worth it because it saves the meniscus. Um, 
bursitis. These these little blue areas. Actually, these are your bursa in here. So they're, these are your bursa, and they help to fluid flow sac, and they help to they help to uh, lubricate the areas where tendons run across go across bones, where tendons and ligaments cross. So if you get and, uh, when you get a uh, with overuse is usually what causes disease. If you're using a lot, sometimes those bursa, or if you get an injury like a direct blow to it, the bursa will get um, can get dried out. And then you start to start rubbing, and then you get irritation. That's, that's bursitis. You don't see that too much in the knee. This is way more common, patellar tendonitis. So this is the patellar tendon here. On this knee, here's your quadriceps or your quad tendon. There's the patellar tendon. And here's the kneecap. That's where the patellar should be. Um, so what happens here is from overuse or a real big strain of some kind. A lot of times we'll call it jumper's knee. Because basketball players got to have a block. Michael Jordan had it for almost his entire professional career. He didn't have it in college, but he got it a couple years. I think he got it like a year after he fractured his foot. So it must have changed his mechanics. And then that same day, he ends up with patellar tendonitis. And that played him his entire career. He's probably still got it. OK, so mechanical problems can be things like that. I'll show, show you pictures of all of these. Mechanical problems could be pronated feet. ITB, a lot of you have heard of iliotibial band syndrome. Posterior gluteus medius weakness, that's a muscle back here. Vastus medialis, that's a muscle in the knee. Uh, and a few of these, actually all of these, can lead to something called chondromalacia patella, which is like that. That's that. <laughs> you know, some people get in their knees when they're, when they're bending and straightening. Um, pronated feet like this, you can see that one is in where it kind of sinks in like that. What happens when your feet pronate is you can see what happens to the knees. You know, and this was me in, in my fifth, sixth grade. I had really bad pronated feet and I was pigeon toe and knock knee. And my father made me stand every day against the wall, turn my feet out, and get as flat as I could against the wall. And it actually fixed the problem, which was pretty amazing. I would have been a mess if I hadn't fixed it, getting that fixed. So I don't know how he knew to do that, but he but but he he just saw me doing this. He's like, okay, we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get that straightened out. So what happens is when you're when you're pronated, you fall in. It changes this angle. See how much I'm gonna exaggerate it a lot, but see how that angle that's called the Q angle. Now that Q angle is much more severe. And now imagine if my muscles here attached to the kneecap and then attached here to the tibia. Imagine if this is a button, and I've got a string that goes from here to here, and a string that goes from there to there. What's going to happen when I pull on that string through my kneecap? If I've got a big angle like this, and I pull on either end of it, can you see how it would kind of shoot that way? And that's exactly what happens. The kneecap shoots that way, rides over onto, rides over onto the little groove that's supposed to be in this groove. It rides over onto the rail, and grinds. And that chews up your kneecap. So that's why when you got problems like this, it makes sense to get orthotics. It makes sense to, um, to try and fix it. IT band, iliotibial band gets blamed for a lot of stuff. Um, it probably itself doesn't do, it isn't the problem all by itself. And there, you know, there's a lot of folks, I'm sure people do a lot of people do foam rolling on foam roller to try and loosen it up. In just the last couple of years, there's a, there's a technique that we specialize in called strain counter strain. Um, where we've identified a lot of tender points right along the front and the back of the ziliotibial band. And if people are really sore, they're going to probably be really tight in the iliotibial band. And those things can be treated. Those tender points can be treated out. I did them on myself you know, a couple years ago when I learned about this, how we, that we can actually treat this. And there's not very many therapists that do it, maybe 10% in the whole country, maybe less than 5% in the Chicago area. Outside of our practice, maybe half a dozen people in the Chicago area in Ohio to do this, but it's really easy. I mean, you literally, you, if you get tender points on the front end, you just take this the, the quad muscle and you pull it up and out towards the tender point and hold it for 30 seconds. You might have to do it at three or four or more locations, depending on how many tender points you got. And for the ones in the back, you just you just take the quad, the you know, hamstring from the back, and you pull it down and out. So down and out, for the ones on the back side, 
up and out for the ones in the front side, and it usually gets rid of them. And I, I've never, I haven't been tight since. They haven't been, they haven't felt tight, haven't felt sore in there ever since. So if I go get a massage or something, they can dig in there all they want. Before, I'd be like, yeah, you know, stop, you're killing me. If they don't know what they're doing, they can injure you. Though. What's that? If they don't know what they're doing, they can injure you. Who are the, what, the masseuse. A masseuse? Yeah. yeah, I'm not a big fan of deep, deep tissue. Yeah. Especially if things really hurt. Yeah. If it really hurts to do something, you probably shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. And if it's that bad, those are usually tender points that can be treated out. And you can get rid of that. Because it's what if they tell you, you know, try to loosen up yourself these uh, uh, yeah. uh, knots or whatever they call it. Uh, what they call these uh, tight spots sometimes they say, because I want to yeah, say have not, that you have to work on it until you loosen up. It's a calcium. And hopefully it will. Yeah, hopefully it will loosen up. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's, it's not, not calcium. But if it's not, yeah, if it's sometimes, you know, the massage is good because it helps, even if it doesn't fix the pro a problem, as long as they're not hurting you when they're doing it, it's good because it increases blood flow. Okay. Blood flow is always good. So you might feel, you know, it's the kind of thing where you might feel good for a day or two, mm -hmm. but then it starts to get tight again. But it doesn't mean it is bad. It's still a good thing. Um, gluteus medius, weakness. So we talked about here, posterior gluteus medius. Here's the, here's the big one. The big gluteus, the gluteus maximus. Your posterior gluteus medius, kind of back in here, is real important because it helps to keep, it helps to prevent this from happening when the knee goes in. So keeping that tight, and people do things on their sides called clamshells, you know, that type of thing. It's real important that those be done properly. If people have to feel it here, you gotta feel it working here, not, not down in the hamstring. Because that, and that's, and when they're weak, it's real easy for someone to do them wrong. And then you end up strengthening the wrong muscle. Um, vastus medialis obliquus, the VMO, that's the one on the inside. This is your vastus lateralis on the outside. A, a weakness here, or if this one's, this could be strong too, it could still be strong, but if this one's too strong, too much stronger, because these should be working about 50-50 when you straighten your leg, when you do like a knee extension. If this one is too strong, It'll tend to pull the kneecap out this way. It goes off onto that rail again and grinds the kneecap again. So that's another thing we can put a surface EMG on people and, and look at is, is this a one-to-one -one ratio or is this muscle working way harder? And if anybody comes in here with, to see me with a kneecap problem, I always test them because that gives me an idea of where, where they're at. And if they got good balance, then it's fine. All we have to do is just the strength in, in, uh, in general. Okay, and chondromalacia patella is what happens when any of those problems or all of them are present and they can combine to give you bad alignment and it just chews up this cartilage here. So there's two kinds of cartilage in the knee. One is the meniscus we talked about, those rubber discs kind of things that are in here. And then you've got this pearl coating that's on the surfaces where the bones meet the bones. That pearl coating wears away in chondromalacia patella and then free nerve endings get exposed, and that's why people get pain. So you can have, like my right knee makes tons of noise. You know, I can't sneak up on anybody going up and down the stairs, because it's like you hear this, you know, kind of grinding, but it doesn't hurt. And you can have grinding for a long time without pain, but then one day, boom, all of a sudden it might start hurting. Because it eventually grinds away enough to where the free nerve endings get exposed. And then, then you have problems. We deal with all of these with st specific strengthening and sp making, checking all these different issues that we talked about and then correcting them. Yeah, posterior gluteus medius weakness, correct for maybe feet, whatever, you know, the balance in, in between the muscles, that type of thing. So another issue is knee arthritis. Osteoarthritis in the knees, I, I, you know, the, the diet part, there's some evidence to suggest that. A lot of that is my opinion. I, and I've just, I just found over the years, I think that a lot of osteoarthritis that people get is because of the knees, because of the way they eat. We're seeing more osteoarthritis now than ever. Some of it is bad diet. Our diets are just getting worse and worse. Um, and some of it is excessive weight because you know, two thirds of our US population is overweight now and 40% are obese. So it, it, that's, that's a big problem. Osteoarthritis, that wears on the joint. Rheumatoid arthritis, 
is there, it's not as, as common.